Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I have the opportunity to work on a Quantum Reel. This is a Quantum Great White 20. And a uh, fellow brought it in and says, just not working right. Well, you know, sometimes you can just get the idea that it probably isn't working right. You see a lot of leaked out greases, dirt that's uh, just been accumulated on the reel over time. And this looks like one of these that it's just a matter of it gets fished until, well, something doesn't work right. However, for the most part, it seems to be doing okay. So I think it's probably just I uh, got some grease and dirt in the wrong places. And if we clean it up, we'll be able to uh, make it work properly or at least a little bit better. We're going to start by removing the exterior pieces and parts. And as I do that, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you do subscribe to my channel, uh, please use that notification button to uh, see what I'm posting and when. And if you like the art of reel repair, if you like to see how reels are made, how they come together and how they come apart and so on, well, this is a good place for you to watch. And subscribing will let you know uh, when I'm posting videos and uh, you can make a choice and see if the video that I'm going to do is one that you would like to see. Well, we're going to take off the handle now because we want to remove the case. This is a screw handle. It has a through shaft to it. And uh, this is a good time to tell you if you're working on a reel that you're not familiar with, and I'm not really familiar with this reel, um, <coughs> take pictures along the way. And uh, if you can, if you need to, go out to the internet, go ahead and, and do a search for the schematic for the reel. And if you uh, get that schematic, that'll be a burst diagram of how the reel is made. And that'll help you to uh, see pictorially how pieces are oriented and, and so on, the design of the reel. And, uh, well, that'll help you in the end to service this easier. We have three screws that are holding the side plate on. We have a funky pink or purple or whatever the right coloration of this is leaking out of the sides. That's generally an indication that the grease underneath is hot sauce. I don't, uh, I'm going to guess that the reel probably was serviced in the past and overloaded with grease or it is quite possible that somebody just tried to force grease in through the, uh, the side openings. It certainly doesn't look like this reel has been serviced anywhere in the last few years because of the way that the dirt and everything is accumulated here and because of the way that the grease has bled out. If you had uh, done this on a regular basis, well, you would have caught the grease before it uh, started doing those kinds of tricks. All right, I'm going to use a blade of a utility knife to help separate the case. And underneath it's a fairly uncomplicated reel, so that's always good to see. It's kind of a standard design. It looks to me, in answer to my question, somebody just tried to jam the grease in through the exterior port. It doesn't look like there's a lot of grease or anything on the, uh, the actual me mechanism underneath there. And so I guess the answer is, even though they may have done a little bit of work on the, uh, the reel, that it's not working properly because it's, well, it's a little bit dried up. All right, I'm just going to get some cleaner on here. Just use a scrubby pad. And I'm using a uh, product called Purple Power. I'm going to try and dissolve that grease. If you use this product, please be careful about it. It does have Y in it. So just do your best to be aware that, uh, well, it's not the most user-friendly of compounds. Oh, you can see we're doing a pretty good job cleaning up here. We're still going to have that stain on it, and I don't think there's anything you can do about the stain, but at least we can get the dirt out of the way. All right, this is a, a reel that has a, a two-tiered gear on it. It has a front and a back gear. The back gear drives a crosswind gear. You can see it in the back there, and that drives a crosswind block, which we're going to remove now and that cross line block will go up and down to provide the oscillation for the spool. The spool will go up and down as a result. With that screw removed, hold the cross line block and pull up on the axle shaft. And again there's no indication that there's been 
that grease used here. It looks like it's just kind of been jammed in a hole one way or another. <clears throat> All right, with the axle shaft out of the way, you can now remove the main gear. And you can see the back of this main gear does not have purple grease on it. It has the, the older original grease to it. And that's just mucky, for lack of a better term. It kind of looks like mud. We're going to do our best to clean it up. So when you're servicing a reel, you want to do a couple of things. You want to clean it of all the old greases and dirts. And this one certainly is a candidate to say reels do get dirty and do need to be cleaned. You want to inspect the pieces and parts as you're doing that. Because, well, these teeth can chip, they can warp, they can crack, they can do all kinds of things. And... Uh, <clears throat> You want to make sure they're okay. In this case, this burring is not coming off easily. And we're going to leave it right there because it probably has happened that the handle has been over tightened and peened off the shaft. So as long as the burring is turning okay, discretion is advised here. Just kind of let the loop seep, seep in. And kind of go to the back end of this now. We want to put fresh grease after checking those teeth. Put some fresh grease onto the teeth. And I'm doing that by using a, an artist's brush. I like that because the hairs don't come loose. And then I'm going to put all my pieces that I work on into a parts tray. I use the bottom of a fast food container. And that parts tray will enable me to find those parts when it's time to reinstall. Alright, we'll just wipe this clean. When you're cleaning your pieces and parts, go for the least abrasive alternatives that you have. That's because you don't want to scar them. You don't want to cause a uh, in the mouth performance of the pieces because they just uh, all of a sudden they have a burr on them or something caused maybe by some sanding or something. All right, we're going to remove the crosswind gear. And there's a little burring inside the gear. I was wondering where they're hiding all those six burrings that they've advertised. The burring goes inside the gear like this. Once you clean that, I'm just going to put some fresh grease on that as well. Now you can grease this now or you can grease it later. In this case, I'm just kind of taking my time to put the grease on there before I load it up. <clears throat> We're going to remove the rotor now. To do that, the first thing you need to do is remove the hold fast screw. And I'm not quite sure what this other one is over here. It may be at some point that somebody decided that um, they put it in that hole and it belonged in the other one on the other side here. I, I don't know. This is one of those cases where I don't know the wheel that well. And it could be any of a number of things. Well. You can use a deep ratchet or you can use a, um, a wrench on this one because it's something that you can reach over the edge of. This is a 12 millimeter. I just need to find the 12 millimeter. It's got a little bit of an offset here. And the first thing you want to do is try the traditional counterclockwise removal. That may work and it may not. And if you're jammed, what you want to do is go the other direction because a lot of these wheels will have an offset that goes the other way. All right, we can remove this. Underneath here, you can see we have a traditional uh, anti-reverse. It's got the tooth layer on the inside of the rotor. So it has a dog mechanism that's over here that's causing that when you, when you bring this out. It will intersect with that. Oh, it's locked in. I see what's going on. <clears throat> so this little tooth here is going to intersect with that when you're uh, when you're back pedaling the reel. Okay, let's grab the cleanup on aisle seven here. I still have some stuff on the. Pad, so I'm just going to use that to, to get as much of this off as I can. I wear a protective glove because, well, who knows what this stuff is on here. 
and sometimes it's just uh, a problem because well as much as it holds the grease away from my hand when I go to work on the, the reel like the cleanup here it transfers the grease back to the reel so I'm going to use a q-tip to get into the tight spots and we'll just do as best we can to make this look as good as it can given the position that uh, or the condition rather that it came in on and while I'm doing this if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular maybe you're working on one and you're a little stuck uh, leave it in the comment section of this video I'll be happy to try and answer that for you I uh, got some questions lately I can't answer somebody asked me the other day when this particular fishing pole was made and it was a steel rod I can guess a little bit but I can't say for certain I can guess that the steel rod was before fiberglass became popular but beyond that I just can't give him an exact year that's okay it was found in his grand grandfather's cabin or something and that made for an interesting story all right I think we can just pull this up right now this has got an instant anti-reverse clutch on it so the, the part here was obviously transferred this probably belonged to a different model reel that um, has the the dog that's going to intersect with that but the, the piece that I just took off there is clearly a um, an anti-reverse it's an anti-reverse <clears throat> we'll put that off to the side for a moment there's also a small little ring that came with that so we'll put that there that's the burring shield for underneath here to get to the burring itself looks like if we remove or if we move that back a little bit we can have access to the two screws that are holding down the pinion gear so I would prefer not to remove that um, that stop, the anti-reverse override stop, unless I have to, because there's springs involved, and for a lot of reasons, when springs get involved, things tend to go in the wrong direction. Alright, we should be able to remove the shaft then. Here's that second of the burring seals. You can see that little washer there. And we want to clean up that mess that's on the pinion gear right now. First thing I'll do is just wipe as much of it off with a paper towel if I can. And then I'm going to use a bristle brush. You can use a toothbrush if you don't have one of these. And that's just to scrape out the channels to make sure they're clear and free of debris. Once I do that, I can go ahead and put fresh grease onto that. And we kind of set that aside for a moment as well. Now, normally I would be putting these into my parts tray. I'm going to reinstall that right away, so we're just going to leave that off to the side for a moment. There's only one other thing I need to do. That's to clear the little bit of grease that's in here <clears throat> away and again we'll use a cotton swab to do that old grease is the enemy of a reel and if you uh, don't take care of it it's going to trap dirt grime sand all kinds of things and then you're going to have issues with wearing down the parts prematurely. All right, that's done well. You can see we got a mess here again. One more time with this cleaning pad. Should take care of that. And again, I'll, I'll concern myself a little bit with the stuff that's coming off my glove and going back on the reel. But for the most part, that can be mopped off in the end can't be mopped off easily as all of this stuff beforehand okay we're in good shape with that 
let's go ahead and do some of the reassembly on this just the way it came out. And we have our gear, we have our bearing, we have the first of those washers. And this went into the cavity and it seats into the bottom here of that spool of the body. Let's take those two little hold down screws that we have, get those in. And the other one's going to be a little bit of a, a trick, I guess, to play with. But just be patient. You should be able to get this started and in. There you go. It's a lot easier going in than it is coming out. <clears throat> All right, then center that little washer. Here's the anti-reverse. Now, you don't oil the instant anti-reverses. Trap that little washer. So Quantum makes a nice series of reels. I'm not that familiar with the Great White series. I guess that was probably named for the color of the reel as much as anything else. But uh, whatever it is, it seems to be a decent reel. sure you can land your collar on and your anti-reverse goes on and the last washer goes over the top of that. Well that screw that we were wondering about there is actually holding a counterweight. So it was a good thing we didn't take that off. This counterweight in the bottom of the Rotor would have fallen off had we removed that screw that's sitting on the outside. Just uh, always good to note. <clears throat> All right, well, we've cleaned this before. You can see I just keep tracking and uh, transferring the greases from this glove on over. So we're just going to pause a moment there. And we'll just uh, accept that when we put the rest of this back on, that we'll uh, clean, clean up the lesser issues there. We want to take our rotor nut, which just kind of tried to make a great escape. Remember, we took this off in a traditional clockwise manner, so we can put that back on. Tighten that down. And let's give it a spin, make sure that it's spinning nicely, which it is. And then go find that tie down screw that we had. This is the one that looks the same as the other one. And make sure that we put that back in the hole so that the rotor nut doesn't travel around. Doesn't matter which hole you put it in. It actually was in the other one. Let's go back to the other. I, I can't believe that there would be a big issue here with counterbalance with one screw on one side and one on the other. But might take a chance. It's not that big a deal. All right, we've got that kind of tied up there, so let's go back and reassemble the rest of the reel. I already put grease onto this crosswind block. Remember the little bearing or collar that's in there? Set your, your stud that's offset to the bottom here. <clears throat> Next up, then, you want to take the crosswind block. You want to make sure that you have the slot clean. And once it's clean, go ahead and put some grease on there. Next up, we've already greased the main gear. Can't recall if I put the oil onto the bearing in the back. Those bearings look like they're shielded, not sealed. So oil would be a good thing. I oil the bearings, I don't grease them. Reset the main gear. Find your axle shaft. <clears throat> Make sure that your axle shaft is clean. Light coating of grease. Don't put too much in because when you pass through the pinion gear here, too much is just going to scrape off. 
you have the flat side facing out as you come down and then you can merge it into the cross line block this is probably hard to see it's either me seeing it or you I guess and then when you have the hole lined up with the hole for the set screw go ahead to your parts tray and get the script the set screw out <clears throat> Just need to install that now. I have no idea on the pricing of this reel. I, uh, I've seen one or two of the bigger ones, I think not size 50 for example, that are surf reels, but I haven't seen the this one's the, the 20 size, which more is in, in, in a line with a, um, a fresh water reel. It's a shame that. Um, However, they use that grease that they stain the case, but fish aren't going to see that. <clears throat> They're not going to know that the reel that's bringing them in kind of stained cosmetically. They're only going to care how to get out of the hook. All right, let's go put these back together. And normally you would want to stagger the way that you put the screws in but in this case the screws are triangular and it really isn't going to matter too much from a tension standpoint if you have four of them you want to go kind of crossing like an x pattern just to keep the tension on the case evened up okay let's see what we've done so far in terms of um, this reel let's just do a quick review while i do a little bit of a cleanup before we address the, the spool so what we've done is we've taken the reel apart, we've inspected and we've examined everything. We've tried to clean the case as best we could. It's obvious that there hasn't been service on this reel in quite some time. And uh, we did what we could cosmetically to the reel. More importantly, from a mechanical standpoint, what we wanted to do is make sure that the reel uh, had all of the parts and that they weren't damaged. And uh, cleaned them up. We took care of the old greases that were in there. A lot of the reel was dry. And when we went to uh, the install, we just went to our parts tray, found all our pieces and parts. And now it's just time to kind of put the rest of it back together and service the spool. And unlike uh, what probably has been the history of this reel, you should try to do this on an annual basis. That's the best way to take care of your reels and protect your investment. If you do it once a year, you can do it before your season starts or after your season ends. Right now I'm getting a lot of work in my shop from people that have just finished the season. And uh, well, it's a good time to do it because if you uh, take care of it at the end of the season, that reel will be ready to go when it's time to go fishing again. I'm going to service the drags in the spool. I'm going to assume, but I don't know, that these are uh, felt washers inside here. They're held in place by a little spring clip. And you want to just work your thin blade so that you can remove the clip. Once you do that, I generally use a little pick that's always on my desk to uh, pull out the washer system because you want to clean the cavity inside here. Make sure that it's free of dirt and debris. We have a click mechanism underneath there, but no drag washers. And because it's a, a 2000 set size, you only have one washer. This is uh, well, kind of a hybrid. It feels like a, a plastic uh, washer of some description. And this one actually was lodged between the two. So you have an eared washer, which is going to hold to the bottom. Then you have this fabric washer. I'm going to leave that alone. Uh, you want to oil or you want to lubricate porous washers. That one doesn't look too porous. And then we want to reset the spring. Just be careful. It is a spring. It's a retention spring. The purpose of that is to hold the the drag washer stack in place so that when you remove the, sp the spool the washers don't spill all over the place. Other than that it has very limited mechanical worth. 
And then we'll just want to load that back up. A little bit of dirt on the bottom of the zester knob, so let's go ahead and take care of that. And this reel will be ready to go fishing again. So again, this is the Quantum Great White. It's model CWS20. We found it in quite a state of disrepair. We'll see how we do. I have another reel that the fellow brought in. You know what? It's a nice smooth reel. I like that. Very good. We can just uh, put a drop of oil in, in both sides of the, the bail arms. Put a drop of oil onto the bail roller. We're going to call this one done. So that's how you service the Quantum Great White 20 reel. By taking it apart, inspecting all the pieces and parts, lubricating it, putting it back together again. Before we end, I want to thank our first responders and essential personnel for everything it is that they do. And uh, to all, please stay safe, stay well, stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.